a couple weeks ago, uh, we had no sun for approximately 10 to 12 days. And the batteries went low and everything shut down on us. And I'm not hooked to the grid and I don't have a clean backup generator to hook to the inverter. So I had to do something and I decided to try one of these Echo Worthy battery chargers. It's a 48 volt, 16 amp. See how it comes. And it actually does come with a 110 volt plug. And it'll only put out half the power if you do run it on that. And it came with a nice manual. It's, you know, it's got communications in it and you can talk to the batteries and stuff. So this is what it looks like. And I also picked up this input for the generator on Viver so I could just plug it right into the shed and have a dedicated input and uh, feed through to the inside safely. And about the only thing I got here that's UL listed is a plug for the uh, unit to plug into that I'm going to be installing. So today I'm just going to show you, you know, how I hooked it up and, uh, you know, that's about it. So first I want to show you this hum sink battery that I got a while ago. It's been working perfectly. It's been running the heaters in my shed here. I've got it on a smart things device with the uh, temperature control and running through that, uh, that inverter there. And that's got two, uh, 450 watt solar panels hooked to that and you can see I've got some Sun today so I'm getting some input on my uh, 1200 here too so uh, you know we do have sunny days in the winter but not too many of them so and I haven't shown you this before but everybody said that you can't do this with batteries well I guess you can because I did it don't recommend you doing it but um, you know I've got some of these batteries to test and I bought some of them and uh, even these vet tier here, I had problems with that one battery was shutting down, but it doesn't matter when you got it in a bank like this. So, you know, it still works okay. Golf cart batteries there. And then I did buy a couple of those uh, Vivor rack batteries a couple months ago to try. And they've been, they've been working out really good. I'm surprised. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about them, you can see I've got them all kind of like uh, parallel together because... The terminals on them are too light. They're just not wide enough for decent lugs, and they're just too light duty uh, for, you know, really for the 100 amps each that they put out. So, you know, it's the only thing bad about them, but otherwise they do work good, and, um, you know, they kind of run the same uh, SOC as everything else. So I've been real happy with them. And you can see I've got even these golf cart batteries. I've got them, you know, just some fuses on them, 150 amp fuses tied into the 600 amp bus bars that feed the inverter with some 4 aught cables. And these have worked out good. They're really nice bus bars. I'll show you a little better in a second. And here's that golf cart battery. I keep that in here to keep it warm during the winter. And, um, you know, it's kind of a backup spare if I need it. And haven't had to use that up. Uh, 3,000 watt inverter in a while and as I said I've been uh, you know keeping this above freezing in here about 45 to 50 degrees using this little 200 watt heater I've got the other bigger one but I haven't really needed it yet um, even with single digit temperatures so I've been happy with that back to this echo worthy um, charger came with some little brackets you could mount it to the wall or you can um you know, use them to mount it anywhere on the back or the sides. You just take out some of the screws in the case there and you put these in and put the screw back in and you've got a uh, mounting bracket. Not super heavy duty or anything, but for what I'm doing, it'll work. I'm just going to tie wrap them to this top shelf just in case we should ever get an earthquake or something like that. And I got everything kind of tie wrapped down there, so it's pretty solid. And I tie wrapped the uh, fuse in the back there, torqued all the nuts and stuff first. And, uh, you know, we're kind of ready to start wiring it up. And you can see I just kind of have these snake through this rack. This rack's really uh, been pretty amazing. And I'm going to go down here and just hook them into the uh, bus bars. Now, the Echo Worthy came with M8. Uh, whole terminals for m8 lugs and i have three um three eighths studs on this on my bus bars so i had to drill them out a little bit 
And these have been really beautiful bus bars, really uh, heavy duty and strong. Uh, shut down all the power output on everything before doing this. And I'm just going to hook these up to the bus bars. And uh, for some reason, I've really had good luck with the battery staying, you know, pretty close to same SOCs. And um, each set's wired. You, know, you can see how they're wired there. And there's uh, four watt cables going up to the inverter and some two watts going to the watt cycles and you know the different size cables for the draw but everything's been uh, charging up fine and working off the inverter fine so even though they say they don't do it i'm doing it and these do come with a nice cover but you can see where the big lugs for like the four aught terminals there how you have to grind the cover out some with a die grinder and let's just get the negative hooked up there too and then turn everything back on and uh be ready to um to go with it just about so that's it that's my uh that's my setup here and you can see it's kind of a mess but it does work now i have to install a, a plug to go out through the wall to plug the generator in so i bought this plug and i'm gonna put it in the front of my panel there this wire raceway i figured the easiest way to you know keep it keep it nice and clean and this vivor Kind of a punch. I found out that the inch and a quarter kind of a punch is the right size for these outlets. A little bit oversized, but it works good. And I just love how this thing makes clean, punches a clean hole every time. It's really super easy to use. No real mess. So definitely if you're going to be messing with electric fitting, this is a really good addition to have. A couple pumps and you got it. Oops, didn't quite go enough. And you gotta come out with a really beautiful clean hole. And I just have to put a couple clearance holes in there to mount the outlet. And um, now I've got to drill through there through the wall and put some conduit in and stuff to get outside. But in the meantime, I also have to run all my grounds together and do a little work on that and get them back to the panel and stuff. So I'm gonna stop this video, you know, right about here and uh, do those updates before I turn it on plug in the generator but you can see um it just plugs in right there and uh hopefully uh you know that'll work we'll see in a little while but it, it sure looks nice and it does have you know some pretty good specs and it will work with my little 4000 watt or 4250 watt generator which is what I was looking for that thing just sips gas and you know as i said before this little 200 watt heater with all that super insulation i put in here has worked great i'm really happy with it it's been staying above freezing and um everything's been good so i'll fire this thing up in the next video and i just want to um break them up so they're not too long